Today, we will talk about the magnetic compass errors caused by turning. As we mentioned in previous videos, the magnetic compass is basically a magnet that is free to rotate about a pivot point, and therefore, since it has such a simple design, it has certain inherent errors that pilots should be aware of. These errors are magnetic variation, compass deviation, and magnetic dip, which in turn is divided into acceleration error and turning error. In this particular video, we will focus on the turning error. However, before going into detail with this, let's remember what is magnetic dip. As we already know, a magnet always aligns with the flux lines of the Earth's magnetic field. And as we can see in this image, these flux lines are parallel to the surface at the equator. However, as they approach the poles, they become more vertical. Let's see it in more detail with this other example. If we place a compass at the equator, the magnetic force acting on it is completely horizontal, since it is parallel to the Earth's surface. Then, the compass will rotate horizontally, giving the heading indication properly. However, if we place the compass far from the equator and closer to one of the poles, it will not only experience the horizontal force of the magnetic field, but also a vertical component. This vertical component will cause the magnet of the compass to tilt around the pivot point, as we can see in this example. This tilting of the compass is known as magnetic dip. And as we just said, it is not present at the equator, since in this case, the force is completely horizontal. Therefore we can say that in the equator, the compass indication does not experience magnetic dip errors. Now, if we are at any point between the equator and one of the poles, the magnet will tilt due to the vertical component of the magnetic field. And although in this position the compass can still rotate horizontally, this tilting will produce errors in the compass indication under certain flight conditions, such as accelerations or turns. In this video, we will focus on the turning errors, so let's get started. The thing is that, when making a turn, a change of heading occurs, which is a form of acceleration. This causes the compass to move faster or slower than normal due to inertia. But in order to understand this better, let's look at the forces that are generated during a turn. In this example, we have a red ball that is tied to a wooden log by a rope. Here, if the ball is pushed forward, it will move in a circular path, since it is tied to the log. In this case, the constant change of direction of the ball is caused by the force exerted by the rope, which points towards the center of the turn. This force is called centripetal force. And according to Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So in this case, the apparent force that opposes to the centripetal force and points outward from the turn is called centrifugal force. This centrifugal force is responsible for compass errors during a turn. Let's see why. As we previously said, at the equator the compass magnet is completely balanced since there is no magnetic dip. This implies that the center of gravity of the magnet is aligned with the pivot point. However, if the compass is placed in the northern hemisphere, the magnet will tilt due to the magnetic dip effect. And here, as we can see, the center of gravity is no longer aligned with the pivot point. Now, although what really happens is that the whole magnet shifts to one side, if we see it from a top point of view, we would see as if the center of gravity of the magnet shifts to the blue side. So with this in mind, let's see what effect this has on the compass indication. In the northern hemisphere, when flying on a north heading, the centrifugal force generated when turning will cause the compass indication to initially deflect to the opposite side of the turn. But let's see why this happens. Here we have an aircraft flying on a north heading, and as we can see, since we are in the northern hemisphere, the center of gravity of the magnet is shifted to the blue side due to magnetic dip. Now, let's say that the aircraft starts turning to the right. In this case, the centrifugal force will act outwards from the turn. This force will pull on the magnet's center of gravity, causing the compass to initially indicate a turn to the left. Now, this situation is temporary, since eventually the compass will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. In other words, we can say that in this case, the compass lags the turn. 
On the other hand, if the aircraft flies on a south heading, the centrifugal force generated when turning will cause the compass indication to deflect to the side of the turn, but with an excessive rate of turn. Let's see an example. Here we have an aircraft flying on a south heading, and let's say that it starts turning to the left. This way, the centrifugal force will pull on the magnet center of gravity, causing the compass to indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn. So in other words, we can say that in this case, the compass leads the turn. Now, it is important to mention that, when flying on a west or east heading, the centrifugal force generated during the turn will not affect the compass indication. Since as we can see, in these cases, the center of gravity, the pivot point, and the centrifugal force are aligned with each other, so the magnet has no tendency to rotate to either side. In summary then, this effect is greater when flying on a north or south heading. And in the northern hemisphere, when turning from a north heading, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction, and then, after a few seconds, it will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. So then we say that the compass lags the turn. And on the other hand, when turning from a south heading, the compass will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn. So then we say that the compass leads the turn. With this being said, the question is, from an operational perspective, what can the pilot do to compensate for this error? Well, in the northern hemisphere, if the aircraft is turning to a north heading, the turn must be stopped before the desired heading is indicated in the compass. In other words, the pilot must undershoot the turn. While if the aircraft is turning to a south heading, the turn must be stopped after the desired heading is indicated in the compass. So, in other words, the pilot must overshoot the turn. Now, we might be wondering, how many degrees should the pilot overshoot or undershoot the turn in relation to the desired heading? Well, to calculate this, we can apply this simple formula, which specifies that the overshoot or undershoot should be half of the latitude plus 15 degrees. Now we have to say that this formula is applicable only in mid-latitudes, which means that it will be useless in case of flying too close to the equator or any of the poles. With this in mind, let's look at an example of how to use it. Suppose an aircraft is flying with heading 300 over the city of Philadelphia, in Pennsylvania, which is around 40 degrees north latitude. Now, let's say that the pilot wants to turn to a north heading. Then, we already know that the pilot must stop the turn before the desired heading. And in order to calculate the number of degrees, we apply the previous formula which results in a required undershoot of 35 degrees in relation to the desired heading. This means that the pilot must stop the turn 35 degrees before reaching north heading in the compass. In practice then, when the turn is started, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction, but then, after a few seconds, it will indicate the turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn, in such a way that when the aircraft actually reaches north heading, the compass will be indicating heading 335. That's why the pilot must stop the turn at this point and wait for the compass to gradually return to the correct heading indication. Now, let's say that the aircraft wants to turn to an east heading. As we know, when flying on a west or east heading, the compass will not experience turning errors, so in this case, the pilot will not have to apply any correction. However, since we are starting the turn from a north heading, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction, but then, it will correct itself until reaching east heading with no error. Finally, let's say that the aircraft now wants to turn to a south heading. In this case, the pilot will have to overshoot the turn and stop at 35 degrees after the desired heading is indicated in the compass. This happens because when turning to a south heading, the compass will indicate a faster rate of turn, in such a way, that when the aircraft actually reaches south heading, the compass will be indicating heading 215. So the pilot will have to stop the turn at this point, and wait for the compass, to gradually return to the correct heading indication. We can easily remember this with the acronym UNOS, which stands for, Undershoot North 
and overshoot south. Now, this is only true in the northern hemisphere. Since in the southern hemisphere the situation is the opposite. What happens here is that the magnet will tilt in the opposite direction than in the northern hemisphere, which means that the magnet's center of gravity will shift towards the red side. This implies that the turning errors in the southern hemisphere will be completely opposite. Let's look at them in more detail. In the southern hemisphere, when flying on a north heading, the centrifugal force generated when turning will cause the compass indication to deflect to the side of the turn. For example, here we have an aircraft flying on a north heading, and as we can see, the center of gravity of the magnet is shifted to the red side due to the magnetic dip effect. Now, let's suppose that the aircraft starts turning to the right, in this case, the centrifugal force will pull on the magnet's center of gravity, causing the compass to indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn. So in other words, the compass leads the turn. On the other hand, when flying on a south heading, the centrifugal force generated when turning will cause the compass indication to initially deflect to the opposite side of the turn, and then, after a few seconds, it will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. So in other words, the compass lags the turn. And just like in the northern hemisphere, if the aircraft is flying on a west or east heading, there will be no turning errors. Since in this case, the center of gravity, the pivot point, and the centrifugal force are aligned with each other. In summary then, this effect is greater when flying on a north or south heading. And in the southern hemisphere, when turning from a north heading, the compass will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a faster rate of turn, so then we say that the compass leads the turn. On the other hand, when turning from a south heading, the compass will briefly indicate a turn in the opposite direction, and then, after a few seconds, it will indicate a turn in the correct direction, but with a slower rate of turn. So then we say that the compass lags the turn. Now, from an operational perspective, to compensate for this error in the southern hemisphere, if the aircraft is turning to a north heading, the turn must be stopped after the desired heading is indicated in the compass. In other words, the pilot must overshoot the turn. While if the aircraft is turning to a south heading, the turn must be stopped before the desired heading is indicated in the compass. So, in other words, the pilot must undershoot the turn. The number of degrees to be corrected can be calculated using this formula, which again, is applicable only in mid-latitudes. Let's see an example of how to use it in the southern hemisphere. Suppose an aircraft is flying with heading 300 over the city of Sydney, in Australia, which is around 32 degrees south latitude. Now, let's say that the pilot wants to turn to a north heading. Then, we already know that the pilot will have to stop the turn after the desired heading is indicated in the compass. And in order to calculate the number of degrees, we apply the previous formula which results in a required overshoot of 31 degrees in relation to the desired heading. This means that the pilot must stop the turn 31 degrees after reaching north heading in the compass. In practice then, during the turn, the compass will show a faster rate of turn in such a way that when the aircraft actually reaches north heading, the compass will be indicating heading 031. So at this point the pilot must stop the turn and wait for the compass to gradually return to the correct heading indication. Now, let's say that the aircraft wants to turn now to an east heading. As we know, when flying on a west or east heading, the compass will not experience turning errors, so in this case, the pilot will not have to apply any correction. However, since the aircraft is starting the turn from a north heading, the compass will initially indicate a faster rate of turn, but then it will correct itself to reach east heading with no error. Finally, let's say that the aircraft wants to turn now to a south heading, in this case, the pilot will have to undershoot the turn and stop 31 degrees before reaching the desired heading in the compass. This happens because when turning to a south heading, the compass will indicate a slower rate of turn in such a way that when the aircraft actually reaches south heading, the compass will be indicating heading 149. So at this point, the pilot will have to stop the turn 
and wait for the compass to gradually return to the correct heading indication. We can easily remember this with the acronym ONUS, which stands for Overshoot North, Undershoot South. Now, it should be clarified that these northern and southern hemispheres that we have talked about are established in relation to the magnetic equator, not the geographic equator. Therefore, the effects caused by the magnetic dip will depend on the position of the aircraft in relation to the magnetic equator only. We can easily appreciate the distribution of the magnetic hemispheres by means of this other image, where the blue area corresponds to the magnetic northern hemisphere and the red area to the magnetic southern hemisphere. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.